I am Pat, and welcome to this episode of My Whiskey Den. I have Chad Pesha here, fellow Whiskey Tribe member, and he's leaving me to go to Atlanta, unfortunately. And that's why we're breaking out the Pappy 15 for a little review later. But that's not what we're drinking now. I mooched some of his uh, Red Breast Cask Strength. Red Breast 12 Cask Strength. It's Magical stuff. It's, I'm having a hard time focusing. But we're going to get on to Distill America. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Uh, we went down to Madison last weekend yes. to the Edgewater Hotel, and they had Distill America, which is a wonderful event that had about 90 different mm -hmm. booths, yep. maybe 92 90 booths. vendors there. Yeah. Uh, absolutely incredible. Um, I got in an hour early. I yeah. felt, felt yeah. a little bad for Chad. I had to leave him, send him back to his room. Yeah. I was with the general admission losers, as I put it, you know, unfortunately. But trust me, three hours with 90 booze, yeah, there was there was plenty of time to make the rounds. They get in an hour early, so I got to go around and uh, talk to a few different booths that maybe Chad didn't, a little more mm -hmm. intimate. I'd uh, always say that it's worth the $20 yes. to get in early for, yes. for the it hour. Is. You get a little bit more intimate experience with all the vendors. Mm -hmm. Not to say that when you know, like the general admission people got in there, it was a long wait. You maybe it was two or three deep. It wasn't like going to a Chicago event no. where you were no. six deep and wondering maybe we should switch. switch exactly. Lines. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Then all of a sudden, you could tell when general admission came in. They started to filter in. And not only that, they also had food booths, which mm -hmm. I thought was uh, mm -hmm. pretty nice. They had about three different food tables. So that was good. So people filtered in, they kind of funneled to the back corners mm -hmm. um, if you were hungry. And that, it was just decent food. I yeah, saw no, like a whole uh, fruit tray of stuff, mm -hmm. some sliders. Yeah. I, I didn't partake, we ate beforehand. I, I, I ate while I was there because, yeah, you, you needed to as you were going through, you know, and it, it, yeah, you've got to pace yourself and you've got to learn to that. It was only my second uh, event like that, so yeah, I've, I've learned you've got to pace yourself a little bit or, you know, it's going to be it's gonna be a fun night, but it can be a long night, so. And that, and I did that too because uh, the first hour right there, at the end of the first hour, I started looking over at Sherry because we were getting right up to people to talk to him. Right. And I was like, uh, I think i got to hold off for a second. <laughs> I was like, I need about 20 minutes and one water yeah. here, and I'll, I'll be back to back to yeah. full strength. But yeah. it did uh, jump on me, like everyone said, so I kind of held off. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. glad everyone yeah. warned, you about, warned me about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, one, one thing that I think is key that they talked about, the guys that, that, that put on Distill America, you know, talk about it, sometimes you have to... Even though it's really good, whatever you're drinking, sometimes you do have to pour it out. It and it and it, it sucks, but you know it's a matter of if you're gonna last and you're gonna walk out on your of your own volition, you, you sometimes have to pour out a little bit. Uh, that happened an awful lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He, there's a part of you at the, at the end of the night that wants to like shed a tear mm -hmm. or, or I think I mentioned how you see these big pour mm -hmm. buckets mm -hmm. and they're this deep and if it wasn't for the germs that's yes. the beginning of a wonderful infinity bottle yes yes they would be <laughs> yes especially especially if you like if you definitely like certain tables a lot more than others yes it would be one heck of a fantastic infinity bottle mm. Sorry, I couldn't keep my mouth away from no, this one. No, I, I understand. No, the this, Red Breast this isn't getting poured out. Yeah, no, 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 no. Out. This does not get poured out, especially not, you know, the Red Breast 12 should not get poured out no matter what, but, well, unless it's in the glass, but and definitely not the cast strength, so, you know. Did you have any plans? Like, a plan of attack before um, you went in? I mean, I looked at it. I looked at the. Yeah, they have a whole booth layout. Most most of these places, most of these events, will do that. Where they'll give you a booth layout and they'll say, "Here's where everything's at," so you can kind of have a plan of attack. Because with 90 booths, once again, even if you took just a sip of everything, you you know you'll be on the floor before the end of the night. So you have to kind of determine. So I didn't really go in with one. I mean, I had a couple that I wanted to go to go try for sure. Some stuff that are my favorites. Michter's is one of my favorites, so I'll visit their table no matter what. Uh, High West was one I wanted to go visit because I really like their stuff. Uh, see if they had the Boo Rye there, which they did, which is really really good. And there um, were a few out of the further out of state ones mm -hmm, too. Exactly. Yeah. Um. You know, but I really didn't go in with a major plan of attack, but I knew names in my head that I kind of wanted to go and kind of wanted to look at. But then some of it is you get in there and. 
you get really engaged with some of the people at their tables and what they have to talk about, and it's a, it's a lot of, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun, and especially if I get really into what I find cool about whiskey is the craft of it all, you know, and what goes into it, and, and these, these people that were there are extremely passionate, you know, they're making, you know, when, when, you know, this isn't like when, you know, Jim Beam says they created something that's small batch, this is, this is, you know, people that are creating, like, it's a barrel, you know. I mean, it's, their, it's, you know, their whole run is a small it, exactly, batch. Exactly, their whole run is a small batch. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's a lot of fun to get to talk to these guys and, and hear about the craft and their excitement that goes into it. And then you're excited because you know what went into making that whiskey, what's in your glass, and then then drinking it. You know. And maybe one or two of the things that make it unique. Like, exactly. The, like uh, like with Henry and Sons, mm -hmm. how their red corn is comes from exactly. Wisconsin, or they got the the okay to use it from mm -hmm. Wisconsin because they mm -hmm. had it copyrighted. Mm -hmm. Just a neat little fact that kind of plays into the story, mm -hmm. and, and whiskey's a lot of the story. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to tell you this. Did you get to try Mixer's toasted barrel when you got in? I did not get to try it when I, but I have tried it at another event. I wish I could have been in earlier to try it there, but I did was able to try it at another event. I mean, it's. Okay. And it's really good stuff. But I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I feel bad, but that yeah, was another you know, thing about hey, the VIP. Is that's, that some no. of the places had some stuff that they went through or pulled yeah. off that, that like hour oh, yeah. afterwards. You know, I felt no. a little bad. I don't, I don't want to bring it up. No, but, no, no. But no. I did want to bring it, it up. But no, but it, it, it's true. The, the thing about any of these events, I've only been to two, so I can't say I'm an expert. But what I've found is that get there early. If you can get the VIP tickets, get those. And especially Distill America, it's really reasonably priced. Um, it was only what seven? It was seventy five for like more. general admission, or it was uh, like sixty for general admission. Okay, that's right. Eighty for the VIP, and, and then the VIP plus was like a hundred. Right. Oh yeah. For an extra twenty dollars more, you got to spend an hour with Martin Duffy tasting whiskeys from mm -hmm. around the world. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who wouldn't want that for twenty dollars? You know, for twenty dollars, yeah, you can pass exactly. That up? And you're going to be able to try stuff that's you know you're you're not going to see every day and not going to be able to get the chance to every day. But that's what I would say is get the get there early. And if there's definitely stuff you want to hit up, definitely brands that you do. like. Hit yeah. those up first because it's like I know I got there and you know by the time I got there four roses they brought the hundred thirtieth anniversary and it was good. <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't there when I got in there. So I mean that's the thing you have to plan for. I know I've seen like uh, at another event I went to Buffalo Trace had brought their whole BTAC collection. So they had oh. William Lewis Weller and they had Stag and they had. Um, you you know, could sit there. You could sit there for half the place. Yeah, basically. But that was the first table we made a beeline to the guy I was with at that point to to because I really I've had Stag and to me. Stag, I mean, I haven't had all of them. I'm only about a year into my whiskey journey, but, you know, Stag was magical this year, and mm -hmm. so that's what we went to first. But that's the goal, or that's what you would hope to do, is get in early so you can go to those tables of stuff you do really like that you won't be able to get stuff that you mm -hmm. can normally get out in the general market unless you're wanting to pay an arm and a leg to get it, which nobody wants to do that. No. Um, that's, that's even with the one we're going to taste mm -hmm. test later. Um, I, I, we... We went mm -hmm. to uh, yes. a lottery, and uh, I, I won it, or I didn't win it. I won the chance to buy mm -hmm. it as number two. Never thought I'd get it. Paid one twenty-five. Now, totally worth that, and yeah. well, more than that. But on the secondary market, uh, twelve hundred, maybe more. Oh, something like I'm, that. Yeah, I'm not gonna pay that. No. 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 There's... That that could fund part of my whiskey crusade for six months to a year. Exactly. And you know, it's not going to happen. Exactly, and especially where you know, I think you know, Pat and I are somewhat similar. Like we like all whiskeys. It's not a matter of like, oh, we just like Scotch or we just like bourbon. It's like we like it all. So it's a matter if you're talking about twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, you can buy. I mean, you can buy year old Scotch. Exactly. <laughs> you can you can buy several good bottles of whatever your favorite is between Ardbeg, Laphroaig, and Lagavulin, or all of them if you yeah. want for twelve hundred dollars, as opposed to spending twelve hundred dollars on a bottle that. I, unless it's life changing, I, I don't think it's worth it, and most of them aren't going to be. And especially at that point, once you paid that price, it's pr probably going to let you down a little bit. Yeah, that that is a fear that comes into that, and we'll we'll see if that falls prey or not. Yeah, coming exactly. Um, now, after we like we were talking, what do you mm -hmm. go around? You hit the main ones. Mm -hmm. Anything that's big, exciting, you haven't had that you want to try mm -hmm. in that first hour, get in there, do it. Chad's right. Next hour, filter into three or four more that you yeah. haven't seen. Then, then in my mind, this is where the fun part starts. Finding the little people you didn't know mm -hmm. about, you didn't hear about, going up to talk to those people and tasting it. Because half the time, that stuff is incredible. And, and Absolutely. I, and that's the storybook stuff that you're like, okay, mm -hmm. 
let, let's get you over here and get you on film. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that did happen with um, Crooked Water Spirits. Yes. Uh, I had a short little blip of them on mm -hmm. the video earlier this week, but uh, there was a inappropriate story that was going yeah. on in the background when we were filming. So I didn't, I thought pretty sure YouTube was going to flag me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, or it could distract from what they were doing. And Heather right. had a wonderful product. Actually, I think it was, I tried to. I tried the Kingsport. Mm -hmm. And I, my apologies, I don't remember the rye that was finished in a rum cask. Mm -hmm. She was talking about that. That was delicious. I can see how some of her barrels are sold out before they're even filled. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I had, I think I had both of those as well, and both were excellent. Um, you know, one, you know, I know that there will be comparisons to the Angels Envy stuff. Mm -hmm. It was definitely, it was, it was different than the Angels Envy stuff. And I've had the Angels Envy rye, and I love it, but it was definitely different. It was more softened the edges a little yes, bit, you know, and everything, it. and it was, it was very, very, all of her stuff was very, very good that I tried, especially that was whiskey related, so yeah, I, I definitely would, you know, the Crooked Water stuff would definitely recommend, and they're, once again, they're putting a lot of craft and effort into what they're trying to put out, and, you know, and really mm -hmm. trying to get certain flavor profiles, and it shows, and they're extremely passionate about what they're doing. I know that they use Yahara Bay for part of their distilling. Mm -hmm. But I was going to say, just the fact that you went to Barbados to hunt down mm -hmm. a few barrels that you thought were, mm -hmm. th th here, these are the barrels I want. Mm -hmm. And that, that's hard. I mean, that, that's what oh, no, you're absolutely. looking for in a story. Absolutely. Um, so that, that was one that I really liked. Mm -hmm. um, were there, oh, one I know you loved mm -hmm. was the Westland Skyana. The Westland Garyana. Garyana, my bad. I didn't get to taste it, and that oh. was one I, you can laugh oh. at me about because yeah. I felt... No, you should have. I mean, it was because you were there early, so you could have tasted yeah. it. But the Westland product. I mean, I've you know, I, I think most people who are probably following us know, you know, Rex Pretty and Daniel solid. from you know uh, the Whiskey Tribe or Whiskey Vault, whichever you want to say, and they've always recommended Westland as a very good North American single malt. So I went to their table wanting to try it because I had never. I've seen it in the stores up here, but haven't ever tried it myself. I uh, haven't taken the chance on buying a bottle yet. It was fantastic. But then they had uh, Gariana, which is a special. Like it's a not endangered, but it's like it's it's a it's not endangered species, but it's very rare as far as the type of oak that it is, and they've curated it and everything, and put it in the barrels. And if you like anything that's smoky or peaty, oh, it's fantastic. So I think what I've heard is it's not going to be out again until the end, like October of this year. So if you have a chance to find it somewhere, Steal um, it. yeah. Get it? It's definitely worth it. You know, once again, I'll say, you have to like peat. You have to like, you know, scotches. You know, but if you do, it's yeah. I was yeah. I was blown away. And if I could have bought the bottle there, I would have. But that wasn't what you could do at the event. But I definitely went out and searched it out to find out when it's coming out. And you were not the only one that said that. Like towards the end of the night, once after I heard it was out, of course. Mm -hmm. um, then it was just everyone around the corner. Well, yeah. well, did you try the West of the Gary? Did you try the last? And I'm like, yeah. th and that was that wasn't the only one that was happening right. too. But that was the one that I was like hearing the most. Damn it, I missed yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know what happened. I mean, not, there's 90 tables. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, seriously, you you'll get lost if you're not careful. Um, the other one, one that was unique. Uh, I'm not a big ginseng fan. Mm -hmm. Over and over, but uh, Great Northern Distillery oh, okay. or distilling. My bad. Mm -hmm. um, they had one where they had like I. I think it was whiskey with a ginger in it. Oh. It was actually in the bottle. I don't know Ooh. if you saw that. No, I didn't. And, uh -huh. it, and it wasn't bad. They don't sell it in the U.S. here. They okay. sell it overseas. Um, but they're thinking about bringing it back because of the flavor and like muscular mules and stuff okay. like that. Yeah. That might, yeah. might kind of hit that. And it was good, but I'm just, I'm not really a ginseng guy. But mm -hmm. I mean, come on, when I'm walking past the bottle and you see a a root planted inside of a bottle. It's hard for me not yeah, to be like, on. what is this? And exactly. Can, give me a taste. Yeah. Give me a taste. And that's part of the fun of this, is you can go up to something and go, I don't you know, have any clue what this is, <laughs> but give me a taste. Let me see if I like it. And you can find new things that maybe you'll get into. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Was was there any other ones that you remember that jumped out at you? Um, whiskey related, um, you know, I think we both will, and maybe we'll touch on here in a second, uh, DeMello's, which oh. was, it's a whole... What, I was going to save on that. Okay, that we'll, we'll, be... we'll come back to it then. Um, as far as other whiskey related stuff, I, I had, um, I've learned I've be, I'm much more of a rye fan than I thought I was, um, so had all the Whistlepig stuff, they... 
fantastic stuff. If you like rye, and it's it's not overly sweet on any of it, but it's really really good. Uh, Rabbit Hole had all their lineup of stuff. Uh, had the I think the PX Sherry Cask was bourbon was really really good, but all the Rabbit Hole stuff was really that good. Was true. That was one I had it had that I was like I've been hemming and hawing at right. the liquor store, and I'm like, man, do well, I get this or not? Exactly. You hit there, and you're right. The PX. Yeah. I was like, for I think it's probably another twenty bucks or something. Yeah. And, um, it's worth it. Yeah. But you, you, <laughs> you know, I, I think we've. I, I you know, I can't speak for Pat, but I know I've seen it on the shelf and the bottles look cool. So, but you don't know if the actual, you know, as I hear a lot of people say, the juice in them is any good, and it was actually it was really good. Um, but yeah, Whistle Pig, the yeah, the the uh, you know Rabbit Hole. Um, there was also I can't remember the name of the company. It was it was odd, and maybe other stuff I wouldn't like, but there was one that was uh, bourbon and rye that was finished in beer barrel. Uh, in beer barrels, and it was That's a gamble. both. Those be a gamble. Yeah, those are both finished. It was both the rye and the bourbon were finished in in stout, and it was it was actually really really good. Then were they blended together, or were they separate? Um, Not to say you should know. Sorry about that. I don't remember for sure. No, That's no, no I just I just don't remember for I don't sure. Don't remember so. the flavor on half the stuff but, I tasted. That. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think that yeah, I mean, I think I think that was those are probably some of the, the highlights. But yeah, I mean, yeah, the Westland was the was the biggest highlight. But some of those other booths. Oh, and the other one where they are extremely passionate. Uh, I think it's Dancing Goat. I don't know if it's Distillery or it's a, Distillery. A, a, yep. Dancing yep. Goat Distillery. So Their limousine rye. Fantastic stuff, and there. I wish I could remember names of everybody that was there, but the, the one of the guys who is, I don't know if he's their head distiller or he's working, you know, but he is he did extremely. It with Chris Biles, if it was. There him. we go. Um, extremely passionate about what he is doing, and it was really good stuff and really came through. I think that was everything, the booze that I went to, that was the fun part of it, was the people who were really passionate about what they were doing and what they were getting into. And there, actually, when you were. When you were talking to Chris, mm -hmm. I was actually sitting out the hallway with Sherry, and I could tell how excited Chris and both you were at that point <laughs> about what you were talking about. Right. I looked over, and I'm like, is that? I'm like, that's Chad. Yeah. Whatever he's doing, that, hey, they're having a good time. I'm yeah. like, that's what it's about. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was I, good. I almost came back in at that point. I was yeah, like, yeah. On. No, it, it was good. And yeah, he was he was really into what, what they're doing as far as, and it's really good product. Limousine Ryan is a really good product, too. I mean, add, add some to their table. But, I mean, overall, they're really into... He's really into the craft of what's going in, you know, not just what's going into the barrel, but where they're sourcing the barrels, all of those things, which is, to me, what has made getting into whiskey so much fun is all of that craft. It's it's so many different levels and steps of things that go into it. And the uniqueness. And I think mm -hmm. with them, they also do something really weird. They use, like, a, not weird, just not used so much in whiskey. It's They use, like, a Solera cask. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which most, most, like, wines will have that happen a little more frequently. Not so much in whiskey, but it's mm -hmm. kind of a, a rounding agent to marry mm -hmm. that way. And uh, right. uh, I almost went to, I mean, I could tech, pick up some of the spices, that rye spices, but it was very unique as a mm -hmm. rye. I don't, yeah. know if, I don't know if you were told that, that you might jump on that, like, that first instance to think that it was at, at least 51%. Right. That's all. Mm -hmm. I'm drinking too fast. I need to slow down. Oh, he's... He's complaining about drinking too fast, and he's drinking Mictor's 10 on the second <laughs> drink. I don't think there's anything wrong with drinking that fast. Uh, I'm just saying. you know, got to pace I'm yourself. Just, well, I have to catch up now. God damn it. Well, take your time. Um, but uh, we were talking before that mini break was uh, about unique things that we found. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to jump off of the whiskey-related section mm -hmm. because it was, this was all alcohol that was there. Yeah. Gins, rums, all sorts of things. Yep. Something I found very odd at the end. Now, I'm not usually like a liqueur guy where you're kind of like a creamy thing. Right. Where you like yeah. chocolate liqueur and this and that. Not usually my thing. I'm not against it. You know, there's some holidays where close to hot chocolate, whatever. Exactly. Boil it in. This is wonderful. Yeah. Now, I don't remember the name of the place. I'll find it. But uh, they were doing an old-fashioned liqueur. Like yeah. a cream. Nice. I don't know... How it came to be, and it isn't on production yet, but I want a bottle. Ah, gotcha. You could pour that on cereal. Ooh. It, ooh. it was That'd be dangerous, man. It is dangerous. No, a cinnamon good. toast crunch. Oh. This, oh, this yeah, sounds. that sounds good. I'm hungry for cinnamon toast crunch. Anyway. Like you put this into production. This is money. Uh, yeah. All sorts of winter drinks. Maybe even gotcha. like, an, like an eggnog you drink. Ooh, with, yeah, yeah. With that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that was, that was along the lines. Um... There was, oh, Sherry found a bitter's place. Oh, okay. Bitter cute. Nice. Um, 
and they had some really interesting stuff. Basically, bitters by the drink. Okay. Bitters developed for a unique Ooh, kind of situation. Nice. That's she cool. got the ones developed for, I don't want to say just for a Moscow mule, but that's what she got, and there was one for Old Fashions as well, okay. which we hemmed and hawed. Nice. But they do have a sample pack. So we're thinking Sweet. about that. Sweet. Because that's, you know, Old Fashions, yeah. holidays, yeah. Christmas here. You know. I'll send you one since you're going to be down in Hotlanta. Yeah, exactly. I don't even know if Old Fashions exist down there. I, I think they still exist, you know, they may be different. That's always the thing you run into. Is I, I've, I've, Moving up here, I've, I've been pretty much just into whiskey, just whiskey straight, whiskey neat. But yeah, I've learned that there's a whole different world of Old Fashions and different types of Old Fashions and things like that. So Do you muddle? Yeah. Do you not muddle? Yeah, sugar cube, sugar, yeah. sugar yeah. syrup. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I like a good cocktail. I'm just not that into it yet, so. It's hard to come back to it. Yeah, you know. You yeah. Know. yeah. I mean, I think you, I saw in your notes earlier, uh, Breckenridge also has some really good product. That, um, was, that was good. I didn't, I don't think I had the PX Sherry Cask, which I heard both you and Sean oh, raving about. Um, I had the, I don't know if it was cast strength, it was like, it was a, I don't know, higher proof uh, product there, but I can definitely recommend their product, uh, definitely some good stuff mm -hmm. as well, so, um, but, yeah. And what I like about that is, going to an event like this, we got a couple things mm -hmm. from around the country, and part of this is, when we go out to distilleries, we're going to show you what happens there, and more so that, and in my mind, if you're on vacation, mm -hmm. You know there's something exactly. to go do. You need exactly. an interesting place to mm -hmm. go do for like two or three hours on a day. And with them, if I go back out to Colorado, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm probably making a stop. Yeah. I'm probably going to make a stop oh, there yeah. in Westland too. Mm -hmm. That yeah. one was very good. Yeah. From just being there, you're like, well, I could spend half a day here and be happy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, and I think that's, yeah, that's a th to, to Pat's point. I mean, I think that's, yeah, go, going and finding some of these places and, you know, that, that you know, if you're really into whiskey, it'll be, you know, four or five hours well invested into going in, and then you're going to try some of the stuff you can't get elsewhere. I mean, this is what people who, you know, if, if when I watch some, like, when I watch another show, uh, it's Bourbonite, and watch, mm -hmm. and all, that they're down in Kentucky, and the stuff that they oh. can get, and the places they can go, and that, they're, like, they're right down the road from Michter's, and, and, you know, even Jim Beam, I mean, because I know some people can, uh, Jim Beam, but it's like, yeah, but there's cool stuff that they're they make. Solid. That, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's it's real some solid. stuff that's solid. You know, you know, there's a lot of these places you can be, you know, they're right down the road from. So it's like, you know, yeah, to go to, you know, a distillery for four or five hours and really get the inside story of how they're making it, what they're doing, and then, you know, taste some of the great product that maybe isn't available to everyone else. Fantastic. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm hoping also to do here. So like in in Wisconsin, Midwest, mm -hmm. when you're going someplace, yeah, uh, say you're going to Green Bay, well, where, where's three or four different places exactly. that are in drivable distance exactly. that if I I care about it, we can go to, or mm -hmm. what bar do do I want to mm -hmm. frequent that I want to stop in at here that right. might be kind of interesting and fun. Exactly, because um, I think part of the key, especially when you're talking about you know Wisconsin, is that I mean Wisconsin's obviously known for beer. I mean, oh. I, I don't think anybody can argue that who lives in Wisconsin either, but... Heavy-handed winner. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But there's there's a lot of good distilleries up here, too. So to, to highlight those and show what those are so you can go and you can see and also try their product. I, mean, um, I know was it, uh, there was one, one guy's batch 14 that we absolutely loved. Okay. Sean nice. and, and Rick, mm -hmm. when we yeah. came over for the chicken weeding contest, uh, they... We all drank the hell out of that mm -hmm. damn whiskey. I, I think we drank half the damn damn batch 14 that existed. I know I had four bottles, and I was trying to find more. And Rick had three. A couple people had a few in there. Nice. And the newer, you know, like the 15 and the 17, mm -hmm. they're good. Right. They're good. They're not exactly the same. The 15, Exactly. The, the 14 had something that just a little bit of extra warm leather note mm -hmm. that wrapped your tongue. And, um, yeah. It was magical. But that's what you get when you're going to like a craft distillery. Exactly. Right? Um, they might only age it for so many months a year. Maybe exactly. you hit a different time of year. Maybe it's a different barrel or something. Mm -hmm. And it could just be the weather itself. Exactly. You know, what happened last year didn't happen this mm -hmm. year, so this isn't exactly mm -hmm. the same. Right. Um, but to know what you're, what it's, what's capable. Mm -hmm. you know, exactly. Like what can you hit in that sweet spot where exactly. you're... Where yeah, I would have stored four more bottles mm -hmm. and, and slapped someone's <laughs> hand had they gone for it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, now, well, I'm going to be honest. Yes. The, the one we, I found, I don't know if you, I, you found it first or I did, but when I found it, I went around hunting people out at the end. 
Sherry, and actually, my wife Sherry found it. Uh -huh. I take my hands off. Yeah. She found it early and said, go try this. And I was overwhelmed at the beginning. Okay. I didn't even know who to go talk sure, to. Sure, sure. I came in and I, to the room, and there's just aisles of whiskey and everything. And I, she's like, go, go talk to someone. And I'm like this. I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know where to look right now. Exactly. I'm, like, I'm over this stuff. I'm, like, exactly. I'm overwhelmed. Give me five minutes to calm mm -hmm. back down and be like, yeah. who? Who should I go talk to? Where do to? you start? Um, so, she tried this place, and I, we I went up later, and it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And and I think I put it in, in the video before. I said it was whiskey in reverse. Yeah. Because what these guys do, they're down in Madison. Mm -hmm. They take honey, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. refine yeah. it, not to a mead. Right, right, right. Specifically, right. discussion exactly. about that. No, I don't. Absolutely. I don't know know how 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 that is, but it is specifically yeah. different. I think I'm gonna guess the 51 percent at the cast strength probably would probably, probably be yeah. the difference. Maybe my guess. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but that on itself was great. Mm -hmm. the, the step process that the three that they had yep. was exactly the yes. way I would show it to people. Mm -hmm. First one was really nice and sweet. It was just the honey that mm -hmm. was refined. Um, cocktails. Oh yeah, no, oh, it would be it fantastic for cocktails. Bottle, bottles all over the time mm -hmm. for cocktails. Yeah. It, it was yeah. nice, neat, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. maybe a little bit of ice. And I'm not usually mm -hmm. a nice person, yeah. but I think that would be nice that yeah. way. Yeah, Some would. Mm -hmm. ice. Okay. Then they jumped up to what they did was they aged it in uh, bourbon barrels. Mm -hmm. And they said mm -hmm. it didn't have to maturate for too long because you already had that honeycomb light kind of fruit aroma smells, mm -hmm. and they were just going to pull some things out of the barrel. Right, right, yeah. What did you think of that one? I thought it was really, really good. I it, the, the name of the company is DeMello's, and it's a, called a Samel, I think is what they call it. That's it's a what whole, they're working for. That's, that's what they're working for. So, so it's a whole new, sorry, jump ahead. But, yeah, no, 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 yeah. no, that's perfect. But it's a whole new category of spirits, basically. Mm -hmm. And it was really, really good. Yeah, the, the stuff that was aged in the bourbon, it was amazing how much it changed from, essentially it was the clear spirit, so... Yep. What you would normally talk with whiskey with white dog, you know, that's coming out of clear the barrel. honey, and it yeah. did, and that actually did have flavor. Yeah, oh no, it did, it did, you know, yeah. and then to age it in the bourbon and the the amount that it changed. But I've had mead, and mead is just it can come across as sickeningly sweet if you've so had that it before. Thicker you know? in my mind. Yeah, yeah. Like a like a thicker mouth feel to mm -hmm. it when you're going through it. Right. So this had much more character, and you could tell it had picked up the influence of being in the bourbon barrel, and it was yeah, it was. You know, I, you know, really good. I mean, I can't, I can't say enough about it. Then, oh yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is what I was, this yeah, is what yeah, I was yeah. like. Okay, grab someone and go tell mm -hmm. someone. Mm -hmm. Is they had that at cask strength. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it was fifty-one percent right out of the barrel. Mm -hmm. First batch they've ever done. Mm -hmm. Batch number one. one. We got to try batch number oh, uno. Cheers on that one. Cheers. Batch number one. Hmm. Because how often do you get to say you have that? Mm -hmm. But the cast strength was phenomenal. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. It, it where this was good at at the normal version mm -hmm. where they just aged it in the barrel. Cast strength blew the top off. Oh yeah. And I said whiskey in reverse. You're aging. You're basically trying to find these slight notes mm -hmm. in the honey crisp and some mm -hmm. of the floral patterns mm -hmm. and apricot little sure. notes and stuff like that from from some of the mash and everything you're mm -hmm. doing. This has this. Absolutely. All this, this does is going in, it's like, dude, I need my barrel notes. Right. Right. And pulls it out. So it, I don't necessarily want to say it was bourbony. I almost thought it was like uh, a lighter scotch kind yeah, of. Yeah, I could like see that. Like, I, could, I, I could see it falling into the category both, of like a, see, like a Japanese whiskey category type of thing. That's, yeah. that's not that, not heavier, smokier scotch, but and it's not... Bourbony sweet, what you can get off of that, or even the rye notes, but it's yeah, it's kind of that you know, not overly friendly and not smooth, but you know, just just really yeah. you, it, it oh and yeah. you still got and you you still got the oak feel mm -hmm. that was oh, yeah, like, yeah. Was, no, like, you still all the that. light stuff and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden that did you got the oak rolling yep. through and I was like this is I don't know it was like a mini epiphany because normally yeah. I would go at it from like I've been going at it this way just learning mm -hmm. learning learning this way I'm like. Holy shit! What if you could just do this and exactly it's, and it's six months in a barrel, mm -hmm. even in Wisconsin? Exactly. And, and you and you would be put and not to, and you know it's not exact. It's not whiskey. No, it's not. But whiskey. But when you're tasting it, mm -hmm. it's so very similar and mm -hmm. really interesting. It was really interesting, and I mean the thing the thing when you get down to it 
too, as well as what will, what's interesting about that as a category is one, how simple it is, you know, as far as what they're doing. It's yeah. honey, it's yeast, and it's water. That's it. That's it. I mean, that's all that's going into that barrel. But the amazing amount of complexity and variances mm. you can get out of that because, you know, we're, when we're, I'm going to geek out here for a sec, but when you're talking about, you know, you, distillers will talk about their mash bill as far as how much corn, rye, barley, and all that. We're talking about it's just honey, but honey is one of those things that, where, where, what, what type of flowers were the bees making Uniquely the honey from? Uniquely regional. Exactly. Very Extremely regional. regional. So you could have, of this spirit, you could have a very wide-ranging, you know, as far as what you're going to get out of it, which I think is the cool part, as well as, you know, then what do you decide to age it in? You know, so what does it oh. add into, you know, add into that? You know, not just if it's do, bourbon, but it's, you know. Do you do a bourbon and, like, and a slash sherry? Mm -hmm. I mean, exactly. You, you start throwing some craziness mm -hmm. in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that would, oh, well, my brain just still going Exactly. And, 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 you know, there's a lot of stuff now. I mean, I just saw the other day uh, that um, Ardbeg is doing stuff, is doing one of theirs. It's, I don't know if it's an anniversary edition or but it's in a rum cask. And that's, I've seen that that's, that's starting next, to grow. This is coming year's thing. They're starting to do that more and more. So you could do that in a rum cask. And that rum, what I've found, adds kind of a more of a buttery note to different stuff. So oh. does that... What does that do for that? Anyway, we're that's going. A, that's a unique butter. That, I like the buttery rum. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I, I know. Yeah, no, I know. No, no, no. I know. We veered off. Yeah, that's what happens here on the show. Yeah. But I'm just saying that if you think about this is something they're trying to start up. And I mean, you know, it's, it's one, it's a matter of you go to these things and you can find these different something things you wouldn't have thought of. So you're yeah. a whiskey guy and you're like, oh, I don't know about gin. And you find a gin that's just fantastic. Or you find what we found with this. Oh. And this, that's a a category they're trying to start, which I yeah. hope they can. I mean, I, I hope it was, continues to go through because that is absolutely. Unique. And like you were saying about, uh, we were talking about it could be uniquely regional. Mm -hmm. I know we were talking, uh, I talked to Josh and Gretchen Galladay that yeah. were down in Texas and they were talking about how they have different flowers in different yeah. regions and just oh, they, yeah. for honey because they have mm -hmm. like six, seven different types of honey in the yep. area. And I'm like, well, if you're doing that, you could almost have a, like a honey farm for just your distillery, exactly, and exactly. almost be planting what you want around it, either mm -hmm. here, or down there, wherever, right? And trying to kind of manipulate the flavor exactly. even more. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. It. How about this? I'm whiskey guy, and it took me and him the hell off of whiskey over it here. It did. We were it over did. here, yeah. and then and, yeah. and we're intrigued and, yeah. and happy. When uh, a fun story, yes. one little fun story. Not to say anyone got out of hand or, or no. was inappropriate because not really inappropriate but my wife was waiting in line at uh, a vendor's booth there you no go name yes. name, the vendor's booth random vendor x booth. and there were three men that were in front of her because like i said not long lines but they were not wanting to move because i i was told that maybe the people working behind the booth were attractive women and the men might not have talked to attractive women in a while. So <laughs> they didn't let my wife in for a second. So they were taking the bottles from the table and pouring my wife samples instead of the, the women pouring samples and explaining their product because they were still wanting some face time. Mm -hmm. Wife patiently was, okay, whatever. And so she got another pour, and then all of a sudden someone someone busted out a wallet. Yeah. And was like getting out money. I thought maybe you know buying something, maybe some you know you could maybe buy bitters. That wasn't alcoholics. Right. So that true. That's legit. True. Um, maybe they have a pin or something that they're they're buying here. I I don't know, but apparently one of the people working there came up and was like, "Hey, what are you buying?" My wife instantaneously, because she's had a few drinks. Not vodka. <laughs> and I, I wish I was in earshot because there's no way I could have kept a straight face. I, oh, let's I was, do a cheers to that. Uh, that was uh, cheers. That, yeah. that was dead on. Uh, well I, done, that, Sherry. Yeah, well done, Sherry. Mm. Then she quickly realized what she had said and was like, oh, I'm just kidding. Knowing my wife, not kidding. <laughs> exactly, yes. But hey, I don't know. hey, Sean's here. It's good to see you. Hey, why don't you come oh, yeah, on? I in here. Sneak, Welcome sneak in, on. Enjoy, yeah, sneak in. Join us. Yeah. Please. All right. Sean too was at the Still America this I weekend, was. so we're gonna we're gonna jump in on a couple questions for him. But uh, I believe it would be wildly uh, inappropriate 
if he didn't have whiskey in his glass. Agreed. So, we've had a Red Breast 12. We Excellent. have had a Mictors 10. Mm -hmm. Do either of those tempt you, or are you going to jump right into the peat monster? Uh, I, uh, I think I'll start with the peat monster. Okay. Oh, I thought so. <laughs> you can grab yours and grab mine. It's all good. So, as Chad's grabbing that, we, we were talking about places and uh, different booths we went to. Was there a booth down at the Still America, any of them that were down there, that you remember that kind of stood out to you, even if it wasn't necessarily whiskey, it could be anything. Ooh, that healthy pour. That is a healthy pour. Kind of like the healthy pours. Oof. He's been pouring, he's been pouring healthy all night. You Not look. helping me, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tasting. It's not. It's a drinking. <laughs> We're drinking here this evening. My opinion is you don't really truly can't get the taste or the nose of anything until about, you know, three or four times in. So, you know, you oh. got to have plenty in the glass. I almost feel like you're, you should have a, not a whole shot, but maybe a half a shot of anything first. You mm -hmm. can just get your... Yeah. Get the alcohol, get everything through you, mm -hmm. get kind of that mindset in, and then get some water, and then go back into mm -hmm. it. I think sometimes if you do it otherwise, that alcohol burn might just jump at you right like quick. Right, yeah, yeah. Especially when you're talking about cast strength stuff. I love cast strength, but yeah, that first nose or that first sip can kind of blow you away a little bit, mm -hmm. and you got to kind of ease into it. So. Now, now I may have acclimatized to that since we started. Well, because, uh, true. I can go right past that. <laughs> No, but, but back mm. to you, were there any booths there that way you tasted anything that stood out to you? I don't know, nothing specific jumps out at me. It really doesn't. Okay, uh, any, any thoughts on the event as a whole? Something uh, you would or would <clears throat> do, something that was worth uh, remembering, plan of, plan of attack? Well, I guess I look at it this way, if, if, I, if I wasn't... If I wasn't aware of what it was like having um, the VIP ticket and just having general admission, I probably would have been pretty happy with general admission. But not, you know, having VIP and then having the ability to, you know, peruse and take your time from like uh, from booth to booth and not feel like cattle. <laughs> um, there is a big difference, you know. I mean, yeah. and not and, and not to say that the value isn't there. Uh, at general admission, it still is because mm -hmm. you, know, you. It's not like you miss out on anything. You just have to like deal with people, right? You know? and, yeah. Or we were talking about and, how you, you can... know, um, and I'm not necessarily not that I hate people. <laughs> I do, but I do. You hear here first. Sean hates people. <laughs> you know, uh, most people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just in, you know, it's oh, there's people there, you know. Mm -hmm. But we were talking about if you're waiting in line like that, sometimes mm -hmm. you can already um, hear the story two or three times. You can hear the pitch. So when you get up mm -hmm. to the line and it's your turn, mm -hmm. you're, he starts with the pitch and you're like, no, what barrel char do you use? Mm -hmm. I, I've heard this three times now. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to get yeah. to my question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where that might pay off in your favor, but it, like I agree with you. It is but, much more personable. But it, it's, it's, it's more personable mm -hmm. because you have that little bit of time to actually maybe interact with mm -hmm. the distiller in some way, shape, or form, or you know, the person that's actually doing the distilling, or mm -hmm. maybe it's just a PR rep. But you know, you get to actually dis you get to actually talk to them and kind of hear a little bit of the story. Oh man! Two two things going on right now. Pat's really enjoying the Mictors Ten. Mm -hmm. Yes, I got and lost. what they say about Pete, which we all three love Pete, but. Mm -hmm. After pouring that, mm. the smell of peat, it's the wafting. smell of the smoke is wafting throughout the room. It's fantastic, by the way. I mean, it's yeah. peat monster. I mean, it's, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah you're, you're just, what can you say? Sniff. I'm getting, I, I'm getting I, Mictor's 10, and then, like, I pull away, and I'm getting... This is, this is a heavy peat right here. Not, yeah. no, it, not comparatively from what we... Oh, and we were the, just the talking... Roma. Mm -hmm. It is. No, it it's is. a great aroma. Peat Monster is fent. I mean, that's what I, I is, fell in love with. I, it. I mean, it's great taste too, but I fell in love with it for the aroma. It's just smooth. Mm -hmm. the, no. the flavor yeah. is wonderful on that. Mm -hmm. That's where talking about blenders one time, and 
that's where I got respect for Blender. Yes. Was Compass Box. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's specifically Peat Monster because I had only had the Lefroy 10. Mm hmm. And that's what I thought, and I'm, they could be, that's what they're putting in it. Right. Now, I thought, because that has such a rich kind of bitey peat at mm -hmm. the end, mm -hmm. that I was like, I don't know, whoever the hell tamed the rich bitey peat right. and almost made it fade away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, you're a gem, you have, you are a master at what you do. Then, like a couple months ago, I tasted the Freud 10 cask strength. Oh. And now there's a subtle difference Ooh. there. The cask strength, nice. I didn't find to be as bitey nice. on that on the second half. And I was like, mm -hmm. now if you're using the cask strength, I see how that would fit in really well mm -hmm. on the peat monster. Yeah. Yeah. Now, not to say I'm not as in awe as I was before, because I right. still am. Right. But it made more sense. Mm -hmm. and, and it only makes sense the more mm -hmm. you taste. Mm-hmm. No, no, I could be lying, and they probably do use the normal one, and I, I'm an ass right now, but that's okay. That's the that's the beauty of the journey is me thinking I'm a goddamn chemist right now. Right. I still think that's the cool part about all of it. You know, we keep going at it, and that you know, mine is you know, is that, and sometimes people will want to want to you know, give people that blend things or put blends together a hard time and. That takes just as much work and art and, and science sometimes, too, as the guys who figure out the mash bills and figure it all. It's like there's all these different steps. And so to be able to, if you've had, peat, if you're a peat head and you like peat monster, you know it's a magical flavor. And so that they blended a couple different things together, and especially with peat, because peat can overpower to no end in mm -hmm. something, especially if you put it in, in a mix of stuff. So for them to be able to get it right and it's that good of a flavor, I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta give the blenders credit. You know, you gotta give people credit that blend this stuff together and get a good flavor profile. That's something else about the event, and I didn't bring mm -hmm. any of this yeah. up. Tons of swag. Yes. Tons yes. of swag. Mm -hmm. This is a thermal bottle, mm -hmm. yeah. hot, hot or cold. cold. Yeah. You hand it out basically to anyone who would go up to a table and take it. Mm -hmm. um, shirts. Pin. Yep. I, I, I don't know. My I felt like I was going to a hippie festival I mean, when my wife came back with all the damn stuff <laughs> in the bag. As much as much as I give, you know, uh, uh, a little bit of hassle on the whole VIP versus general admission. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not really that big of a deal. I mean, there was enough stuff for oh, yeah. people that oh, came yeah. in in general admission. Yeah. I mean, I want to say that they did an excellent job. The hotel yes. did a great job yes. at, at the venue. Um, you know, no problems there. Yeah. I, I I enjoyed the event. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think I maybe enjoyed it more just because I had that VIP and well, I sure. had a little yeah. bit of an experience well, ahead of time. But I think we don't want to take that step or two steps mm -hmm. up if you can. Yeah. Well, and we touched on it earlier that you know part of getting that VIP thing, the VIP experience is a matter of you get to try some things you wouldn't because once General Mission comes in, some of those things are gone. You know, they only brought one bottle of like four That's roses, possibly, yeah. or but, or, or Waller Shimes. Secret bottle. Right, exactly. Yeah, I didn't know they had a secret uh, bottle. So well, I mean, see, it, 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 it wasn't secret, it, just, it was unnamed because they weren't unnamed. able to, uh, you know, because of how it was made, it couldn't be listed mm -hmm. as a certain rye that they wanted to list it as a rye. So, mm -hmm. you know, the whiskey like has a rich history of rules. and so <laughs> Far too know. many rules. But, Far too many. But, but it's good stuff. See, and, and to me, we were talking about blending before, like that, to me, it, you know, anything like that, a whiskey is all just about preference and taste, you mm -hmm. know, each, each individual has their own palate, yep. right, so to me, variety is, is better than, like, just the strict rules of, like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whiskey, yes. you know, I've had seven cheeses, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. I've had seven, seven cheeses. cheeses, this one is the best, and yeah. it's like, yeah, but, come on, yeah. there's a lot more cheeses out there, there's a lot more cheeses, you, you it, it doesn't mean that something's bad just because no. it's different, right, no, so, right, yeah, so, it's, and yeah, it's, and it's, we were saying, it's, and palettes are unique, right, completely, and that's the one finding something that's like splashy to you that was amazing. Like I didn't mm -hmm. care if it was going to be a June, you know, a gin, a rum. I figured mm -hmm. there was going to be something offhanded here that caught mm -hmm. me, and I was like, "Can we blend this? Mm -hmm. or can how is this going to work in a drink? It's going to be used some somehow." Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah. Well, we're glad you finally made it here. Yes, I we just like love the in breath of a peat monster. I just, I really do. It's so good. Is it, is it the, the little briny thing, or like the fresh? 
I don't know. It, I can is. smell you from here, man. Mm -hmm. I almost wanted to lick you just now. That's, mm -hmm. no, okay, we're gonna, I'm not going to go that far. You yeah, know, well, it's, it's, you know, well, you're I'll leave that pat. It. Well, no, it's, I know. I'm, I'm getting the whiff, though. I mean, you know, the, that, that peat is i got to get into Mictor's 10 just to break it. Yeah. And I have a little bit of a stuffy nose, and that's still yeah. coming right through that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <sighs> well, a couple things we mentioned before, and just to maybe spur your memory, mm -hmm. is we talked about the bitters that Sherry found. There was a yeah, I company. like that there was like uh, like the, the variety of bitters. Mm -hmm. I had a, a photo of that. I was going to post that on Facebook. But nice. Unfortunately, yeah, I didn't get back on that easy. Um. There was the one place I found down in Madison like, that did liqueurs, and they did uh, old-fashioned liqueur, kind of like cream, like what you would do like in a white Russian almost, and mm -hmm. you could just pour it on ice. Okay. I, I, it was really good, and not to, it had put the other things they had, like say, good, 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 nice, good. This, I'm like, it wasn't even in production yet, I'm like, this is where you make money. This this is mm -hmm. this is a clearly a whole half step above what you're making. Everywhere else, that you could sell this to every bitters? bar. Bitters is a whole nother level. Well, I was talking cream, but you're talking oh, bitters. Yeah, you go bit. There's different weird stuff. Mm -hmm. Go back to bitters. Oh, sorry, I apologize. I thought no, you were no, talking no, about no, that. Jump into the bitters. We go back. I, to I like that, and I like the, the variety of them because mm -hmm. bitters is a whole other thing. Yep. You know, I mean, uh, I have individuals that I know that just enjoy taking bitters as a shot. Really? Ugh. Yeah, hmm. I know it's different, but to know. each their own. Right. Yeah. Again, it, it it, each palette is different. Each right? palette is different. And, and yes. having and having that variety mm -hmm. that is that was present there is is you know an mm -hmm. option. Yeah, uh, that's nice. Well, Sherry got the one where we were talking about her bitters was mm -hmm. for Moscow mules, and there was different. designed for Moscow. And then there's mm -hmm. ones designed for old fashions, and there was ones designed for this. And I'm like, well, now that sounds interesting. And mm -hmm. they had the the spirited women. That Ooh, were, yeah, that yeah. were uh, there as well. They were making cocktails, but as they were making small cocktails, they would take you know bits of rinds of uh, yeah. orange or lemon yeah. or whatever, and show you what the zest hitting the top of that versus mm -hmm. not how much that could dramatically change the aroma, and mm -hmm. then what you thought of it because of that. Well, you know the aroma is like a lot of the taste. Mm -hmm. you know? When you drink something, then mm -hmm. most of it is through the nose. Yep. You know, that's yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so yeah, no, that was yeah, that was very cool that you know, what was it what were they called again? The Spirited Women. Spirited Women, yeah. And so that was, yeah, they mixed, you know, a couple cocktails for, for us and you know, just small cocktails, but you know, mixed those for us and so we had had a taste and then they're like, Okay, now add orange zest. And it was like, yeah, no, like oh wow. That you know, completely changed, you know, everything yeah. not everything about it, but I mean it, it definitely added it something new to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, brought in all sorts so, of new the yeah. flavors that were in there you weren't quite getting that might have been subtle. And like a lot of it just was aromatic. Mm -hmm. right? so you're like Yeah. Yeah. Shh, shh, like the, the orange citrus coming in with mm -hmm. what was going on. It was really nice. Mm -hmm. What did you guys think about the food that they had at Still America? Uh, we talked about that before. I yeah. didn't eat any, but I thought it was tremendous. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Fruit, whatever, on the From one side, saw, and then over good. here it was sliders yeah. and other no, they, stuff. And then out all the, the mini hall, sliders. They yeah. had like three different sections where you could go get food mm -hmm. and kind of take a break and mm -hmm. refuel. Yep. A wonderful idea. And when you add that into the ticket, since it oh, would have been like, mm -hmm. I want to have five yeah. sliders because I accidentally drank I mean, five real shots right. before I knew what was going on. Right. You could do that. Because well, I didn't know it is a whiskey tasting mm -hmm. event. Yeah. I mean, you are consuming alcohol. So well, want to keep having you. that having that uh, additional benefit of, you know, having something to eat to help mm -hmm. curb that. Well, uh, and, and the thing I would give Distill America credit for, I, you know, it was t I told these guys, you know, I'd been to, you know, like I said, the one before, and it was a matter of, like, as the night went on, the pores got smaller and smaller to where you bar barely even had a taste where, like, Distill, they definitely, you know, like it wasn't like a full pour. I don't mean that, but like they definitely didn't weren't, you know, didn't weren't Short cheapskates. Pour, yeah. yeah, exactly. As far as what they were doing pours, even as you're talking about, you're getting into, you know, if you're a VIP, you were four hours, you know, three hours, four hours in the event, or if you're general admission, you're two hours in the event. They weren't, you know, they weren't low pours for what it was. I mean, you definitely had, had a lot. So yeah, you needed, you know, that food to kind of, you know, even things yeah. out and everything, but. You know, you got, you know, it was definitely, it was it was worth the price of admission. I think they're doing a great job as far yeah. as where they're trying to keep the ticket price and who you can come and you can see mm -hmm. and what you can get out of it. And we discussed where it was, if they did have food like that mm -hmm. and you did the VIP or the super VIP where you got there even an right. hour earlier, right. 
you might, if we ever did that, you might do super VIP for an hour, normal v VIP for an hour, and then go get something to eat if they didn't have food and come exactly. back for the last one. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But yeah. with with what they were doing, there was no real reason to leave. Just mm -hmm. grab a plate, grab you know, yeah. a couple sliders, a little fruit, go sit down for a minute, have a water, come back. Yep. You know, I mean, and the attendance wasn't uh, too too large that it wasn't no. a fun event, you know. Right. So, uh, even as a distiller, from like the booth standpoint, mm -hmm. they had an intimate interaction with the clients mm -hmm. that they were, you know, right. attempting to yeah. interact with. You know, so that was actually nice too. It wasn't mm -hmm. too overcrowded, even at the general admission point. Yeah. I mean, yes, you were bumping elbows with people. Sure. But it wasn't. It wasn't like to the point where like it got you're obscene. rubbing on someone. Mm -hmm. all right, the time. it wasn't yeah. totally bad, you know. So. And the cool part is, once you even get to the general mission part, is most everybody is there because they love you know whiskey or they love spirits or whatever it is. So they're all there for the same reason that you are. Hopefully, they're not just there. Yeah. You know, if you just if you were just going to get drunk, go to a bar. But you're there to actually learn and you know try some new stuff and things like that. So. You're finding new people, you know, finding new people that have, you know, same taste as you, you know, things like that. People you can gravitate towards, you know, new friends, things like that. So that's the and, cool thing. Or even distillers that have things that are unique that you didn't know. Exactly. Even though it was something that, uh, of, uh, exactly. from a distiller that you drink something from, that exactly. they brought unique things to, mm -hmm. you know. So and what, and what you were just saying, and, and Chad and I are part of the Whiskey Tribe, and I know I mentioned it to you, but that fits right up the alley. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. This whole event hit that whole like feel, for, mm -hmm. like, the vibe for what you're going for up that alley where it was right. like, listen, let's be relaxed, yeah. let's let's be transparent, mm -hmm. let's try to make this about the people, the whiskey, the uh, the environment, and what what happens here. Let's make it a uh, basically an event. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Make it an event. Exactly. A comfortable event, mm -hmm. one where everyone comes in and no one feels like. They're out of place. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with the tickets. Like we were talking about, had we done this in Chicago, mm -hmm. it would have been like thousands, of, thousands of dollars. Yep. Because you know? yeah. it would have been like almost two fifty or yeah. almost three hundred for a ticket. Mm -hmm. Then you got hotels. Then you got everything else. Right. Right. Um, this was accessible to everyone and mm -hmm. felt like they wanted you to get to know the people. Right. Yeah. It was almost educational. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, yes, and, I would agree. Where you had time, to, like actually sit and actually interact with the individuals mm -hmm. at the booth and mm -hmm. like maybe find out history and some uniqueness right. on why flavors were put together mm -hmm. or where they're from and right. uh, something that has uh, brand recognition for that distiller. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Why so. is this one one of your top two or three sellers? Now is mm -hmm. it just because, like we were talking like Jim Beam, is it because this is standard? Right, it makes, exactly. It makes you tons. Yeah. Or when you're talking to the actual person, and and we like I learned the night before, distillers say just, what's the best that you have? Mm -hmm. What's the best that you have? Yeah. Like that. So it's I don't approach tough, it that way whenever I talk to them. It's tough to say that from a but distiller. Yeah, that's that's because horrible. Because they, they make brands. Because they're, yeah, they're all making things. that They're right. making the best product that they view that they can make. Well, you know, how, how, that, how are you supposed to choose the best of the, what they make? Mm -hmm. and, and everyone's palate is different. So what that is, right. what are you most proud of? Let, let's what are you most proud, proud of? Exactly. What, are you, proud what, are you, of what are you the most proud of? Exactly. Because, I mean, you know, th think of it this way. It's a matter of if you if you are a person that likes, let's just put, it's that type of season right now, Girl Scout cookies. You probably like all Girl Scout cookies. Yes, you probably have one that is your favorite. I don't mean that you don't. But you probably like... You most probably girls tried them all, exactly. and, they're, and they're not like, you like oh, I don't like that one cookies. at all. You know? But it's a matter okay, of, the, you know, it's a matter of there's good. a lot of different flavors for a lot of different people, you know, and so it, it's, you know, yeah, for a distiller, when you're talking to them, it's like, well, what's your favorite? It's like, well, but I'm, if I, if it was my favorite, then that would be the only thing I'm distilling. Why would I yeah, distill I, a rye? I would Why would I do a brandy if I only like making bourbon? You know, and I'm could, doing and this I because... I all day and be happy. Yeah, exactly. I like this because it's something different and I like this because it's something different yeah it is variety yeah all right we're gonna take a short break and then we're gonna come back and jump to the pappy <laughs> This guy is, you know, because he's got like this heart fog and everything. And he was like total wine wine baby. <laughs> After we were done at the Still America, mm -hmm. we ended up going back. Well, we went to grab some something to eat because we were all a little 
a little overloaded. We, we met about seven or eight other people from the Whiskey Tribe. Absolutely. That were there. Uh, we went went to Ian's Pizzas, grabbed some pizzas, uh, slices. They, they forgot about mine. I almost took three of someone else's slices. Well, we, we left there. We got back. Uh, my wife dove, dove into the room. She's like... I'm good. I've had enough yeah. for the oh, evening. Yeah. And that was fair. It was probably 10, 11 o'clock. Yeah, something and like that. Some yeah, people that were pretty tired. Um, but when we jumped back into the room, there were all sorts of whiskeys. Yes. Yes. We're, we're going to link to Steve's little video of them here. <laughs> uh, I, let's just say I had a few. Yeah, well, yeah. As had you should have. I mean, that was the point, um, you know. But we, we were going to do a Pappy 15 review that night. Mm-hmm. After we had had so many, we felt maybe that might not do it justice. Correct. Yeah. Uh, maybe not, with, with all the hype that's behind it. Mm -hmm. And we, we may bring it up now tonight. Uh, I do ha did have feelings from that night, and I am intrigued to see if they stay similar. And I don't want to let you, I don't want to gotcha. scare you no. on that. The only other thing that happened that night as far as tasting that was unique for me was Steve A. brought the Rhetoric 25. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had brought the Rhetoric 24 that Jeffrey Patron had given me when we were down in Austin. Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, it was a very unique comparison. I don't want to... I'm not being mean to the bottle that you gave me. The 25 won. Just hairs. Hey. What, uh, a little less oaky, and it had this... Uh, like cream, like a flat cream soda okay. in it somewhere, okay. like gotcha. not heavy, but like it mm -hmm. traded a little oak for some flat cream soda, okay, and rounded it. Gotcha, and okay. uh, that jumped ahead. It jumped ahead. Yeah. So I, I, that was those two things I was happy about. Nice. Now there was like nice. fifteen other bottles. There's a Butch Come on, uh, I don't even want to go through the list. I got there's lost. a lot. I got lost in the sauce. Yeah, there was a I'll lot. just be honest. It was, yeah. it was in there. Yeah. So that's why we're going to be doing the Pappy 15 here yes. in just a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely.